morning. I'm on my way to a heat issue with the master bedroom and moving two condenser units. They're gonna have work done, so the condensers need to be temporarily moved out of the way. And the no heat, Mike said he thinks it's probably a zone valve. He's been there before, I haven't been there before. It's a huge house. So hopefully I'll get some footage. Peter's here. So here's the six condenser units. And the two I'm moving are this one and this one. And they're just gonna be put off to the side while they do work. So I'm gonna start recovering this one. We're gonna have to lift it up and over these condensers to get rid of it, so. Okay, so I have my lines hooked up to, or my gauges hooked up to the refrigerant lines. I closed off the service ports for the condenser so that the refrigerant stays in those and I'm recovering to a recovery tank. I have the scale to see how much I take out and I've already bled, bled the lines of air and now I just need to turn it on. And you can see the amount going up on the scale. Pulling the refrigerant out of the system and into that tank. So we pulled out 1.09 pounds of R410A and now I have this disconnected uh, and the electrical disconnected and I disconnected them here because I know that I'll, when I reconnect these, I'll just heat these up and pull this out, pull this out and I have to replace the filter dryer since it's exposed to the air now. Um, and this, I think this would be the best way for me to do it. And this is how I did the unit the other day. So now we have to lift this unit up and over to at least out of here. And then we can wheel it somewhere. Okay, so we got the first unit moved over here for now. We'll probably move it somewhere afterwards. But I did put fingers from gloves and some tape to kind of waterproof it and keep moisture and dirt out in the meantime. And I'll do the same with the line set. Actually, I'm going to crimp the line set. And then we'll work on the other unit. So, here's that line set. Crimped. Nice and tight. That way nothing gets on the inside. This is the uh, scale we're using. It's the Elitac Bluetooth scale. And it's a field piece recovery machine. So now we're going to get started on this unit. And it should be a little bit easier because we have some more room to carry it over these units. So I'm closing up these service ports again to keep the refrigerant in the machine, most of it, and I'll close the liquid side as well. We're doing that same recovery process. These are the yellow jacket gauges that I use for charging and for recovering. Uh, I like the digital for subcooling and superheat, but these work to just recover or to put a certain amount of refrigerant back in because um, they have the ports and the digital ones are wireless but it's coming down almost to zero this will pull close to a vacuum and then it'll stop and shut off and then I'll close everything up close the ports we'll disconnect the line sets and we'll carry this one out too I got the electrical disconnected and I didn't have wire nuts for wire this size so I individually wrapped them and then I wrapped them with electrical tape. The disconnect is in the off position regardless but just to kind of keep water from getting in. The cutter I'm using to cut the lines is a little Lennox cutter and I think it does up to 7 8 and it's nice for tight spots. And once I get these cut, we'll bring the unit over, and then we'll figure out a spot that we can move both of them. And it usually cuts pretty quickly, but I have it on kind of a weird angle on uh, this fitting right here. So I'm kind of going carefully. Get here. That's actually not refrigerant coming out. That's a vacuum being broken because the recovery machine pulls it all the way down into a vacuum before it stops. And I'll make sure to crimp this line, I'll crimp the suction line, and I'll cover these because when I 
reinstall it, I'll heat these up to pull out the little nubs that I leave behind. And to get to the larger line, since it's so close to the ground, I'm lifting it up and I put it on my steel toe. It's a lightweight, so it's not going to kill me, but that makes it so I could get my cutter underneath right here. So here's where they were now, and that's where we moved them to temporarily. Now we're going to go inside and see what the issue is with the heat. Okay, so I'm in the boiler room. Big, massive boiler. It is 280,000 BTUs. It's a Burnham ES2A. And been here before. Not me, but the pipe doctor. And here is our zone relay. Now, I thought it was zone valves that was controlling this, but it's not. We have a circulator for that master suite. And you can see it comes in through here, where it goes up and over, and it's wired into zone 2. And if we look here, we can see zone or zone 1, sorry, not zone 2, is um, red, because Peter is cycling the power on it upstairs. Now, when I went to that thermostat, it did say there was an alert, and that alert was no 24 volts to the thermostat, which I know is not true because I measured it with a voltmeter and I got 24 volts. And when I removed the thermostat and put it back on, it read that 24 volts. Now the thermostat itself is a little bit loose on the wall, so I'll show you that. So here's that thermostat. You can see it just won't sit flush on this piece. And right now, it doesn't say anything, but it was just flashing to replace the battery, which we already did. And it was saying up here, system alert, power, or no 24 volts, no power. So I'm gonna be replacing this thermostat. So to confirm that the heat's working, I have the FLIR i7, which Mike gave me. And you can see we are getting heat out of the register. And I did feel it with my hand to make sure I felt airflow. And I did. So we know that the heat works. The issue is just with the thermostat telling the heat to turn on. So we have our new thermostat right here. It says Pipe Doctor right on it. And we'll replace that one. Okay, so here's the new thermostat on the wall. And we're going to do a combustion analysis on the boiler. So I finished up with that. And we have another no heat call. Um, but for this job, that thermostat actually needs to be replaced with the exact same model. Because it has a wireless sensor in one of the bedrooms so right now we're just keeping that thermostat in so she has control of the temperature but uh we'll come back and put in the placement model At the next okay so i kind of got caught up in the job and forgot completely to record but let me show you what i'm working with here's the water that came out of the boiler and you can see zero pressure it was at I tried to purge the system of air, and it went straight down to zero, wouldn't go up. His backflow preventer was clogged, and his pressure reducing valve was also clogged. So we have a new backflow preventer and a new pressure reducing valve. We're working on getting that in. And uh, his issue is he doesn't have water circulating in these two zones, and I believe it's because they're airbound. Uh, you can hear air traveling throughout uh, in the primary loop, and this temperature just does not drop on the boiler. It gets up to 180, takes like 30 minutes for it to even get close to 160, so right now we're replacing this, that way we can go ahead and purge those zones of air, get this boiler to the proper pressure, and then start diagnosing further if it has further issues than that. Okay, right now, right now we're purging the system of air and getting some of this really cruddy water out of here. There's a ton of air in this system, and I mean this water is like mud. So I'm going to try to get this water cleaner so it circulates better, um, but 
for now, getting the air out, make sure we're good on that. Okay, we're switching to the other zone, and we're gonna see how dirty this is. Turn the flash on. Not too much air yet. Definitely filthy though. Just little bubbles. I can't believe how dirty this water is. Have you seen water this dirty, Peter? No. This it's is probably the water. blackest water I've ever seen. It smells good. Yeah, it, it smells like fish. But seem to be pretty good on air. Uh, you want to pull the hose up so we, I can see how clear it is. And we are running a lot clearer now, so we should be good on that zone. Now we'll fire up the boiler. Oh, I'm hearing a little bit of air. We'll fire the boiler up and see how it operates now that we have flow and good pressure. Okay, so what was happening with this boiler was... The homeowner said... He was getting a 6 right here, and whatever number it was reading here, which was around 180. 6 means that the boiler is at its set point temperature. And he was saying it would hit 6, and it would stay like that for a full day. And that's because this system had no flow, so the water was just sitting in the heat exchanger at 180 degrees, and, I mean, eventually it would drop to the point where it would fire again, but it would take so long that the homeowner wouldn't even notice. Um, so now he has flow and the return lines are coming back hot. You can see this is taking way longer to heat up now than it was before and now it should also cool down faster than it did before. One fifty six. Let it sit for a while, see how much the temperature drops, and if it refires. Now, after a few minutes, it went into one, which was pre purge, post purge, through two, and now we're up to three, burner responding. We should go up to four, or no, we'll stay at three. And it may hit five, uh, which is checking the air pressure switch, but we want to get it back up to six again when it hits the set point temperature. See the work we did up here. It doesn't look perfect, but this is how we had to do it because of the way everything is and the way it was set up prior. Um, but he's got a brand new backflow, a brand new pressure reducing valve. I was suspicious of these fittings right here. I thought they would leak when I was messing with that stuff, but thankfully they didn't. And this air separator. It does separate air, but it was spitting out a little bit before. But he doesn't want to replace things unnecessarily. So, it's not spitting right now. Um, this is our primary loop circulator, which this was circulating. But it's just circulating through the near boiler piping, which is why that temperature wasn't dropping quickly. And here are our two zones, first floor, second floor for heating, which come off of this circulator. So we'll just keep an eye on it for a while, make sure it looks good, and it's giving him heat upstairs. Another thing that I didn't show, uh, one of the first things that I had walked up to was, it was an IRA 40, which is flue gas temperature sensor circuit open. Um, but I had this piece, which was touching onto the uh, connection. And I, I removed this, and I, tuck, I removed the sensor, and I actually spoke with Burnham. He said uh, it just needs to be cleaned off, and it happens, because it's sitting right down here where the condensate is. Sometimes it gets really caked up with junk. So he said I could leave this clip out, and all we're doing is making sure that that doesn't open up again. 
Uh, we're at 152. It's gonna get closer to 160, and then we'll get that six burner off, set point temperature to reach. Uh, I can feel that these are scorching hot now, which we didn't have before. We have circulation coming up through the zones. This is definitely working. I was worried this was gonna be plugged up with dirt as well, but it is circulating. Originally, I thought it was just the pressure reducing valve that was gonna be plugged up. Once I had that removed, I actually opened this to try to clean some of the gunk out of the old uh, backflow preventer and practically no flow. I mean, some flow came through, but that was no good. Uh, the old pressure reducing valve, uh, Peter took it out in the garbage, but just completely caked up with rust and mud. So, I think this guy will be good for a while. We're going to do a combustion test. It has this nice little access port right here. And I've actually never seen one of these Burnham Freedoms. This is my first time. But it actually looks kind of similar to the Vosh Green Star inside a little bit. Um, a little bit like a shrunken down one McLean Ultra. I'm curious how the inside looks. Um, it does not look like this front cover comes off to clean it. Starting route tweet. Okay, so I finished up there. He has heat, he's super happy. Um, now I'm on my way back to the shop. That's where Mike has requested I go. Um, and that might be it for the day. So hopefully if you enjoyed watching this video. Miles. If you did, right like Avenue. it, comment if you want to see anything different or any criticisms, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.